Hello everyone and welcome to the final round of the 2021 Tata Steel Chess Tournament. The last game we'll be showing, as I already mentioned yesterday, there was um, a lot of controversy during the actual game, so we're going to discuss that a little bit as well. Uh, it's Alireza Firuca versus Radoslav Wojtaszek, and as the situation currently stands, Alireza is still hoping that he will uh, beat uh, Radoslav this game and uh, maybe go into tie breaks against uh, whoever uh, comes out on top, whether it will be Fabi, Anishgiri, uh, uh, the, the, the now known winner of the Tata Steel, uh, Jordan Van Forest or whoever. Uh, so Alireza, Alireza needs to play a great game and uh, let's see what happened here. And also I have one very interesting announcement at the end of the video, uh, so stay tuned for that as well. So Alireza with the white pieces opens with knight to f3. Uh, we have d5 by Ra Radek, we have g3 and now knight to d7. Going for the uh, King's Indian attack with white, we have d4 uh, and now knight to b6. This is the so-called Barca system and uh, it's, uh, well, it's a very... Uh, sneaky way to play with black. Uh, we have knight to c3 and now knight to f6. So the four knights are outside, but this knight is a little bit to the left. I know this triggers a lot of you, but uh, chess is sometimes ruthless like that. So here a4, immediately Alireza wants to kick away this knight from b6. So a5, preventing that. And now bishop to g2. Alireza continues developing h6 and castles. And here bishop to f5. And uh, just to, to uh, you know, uh, get, get you ready for it, this will be a very, very complicated game with a very, very, uh, you know, tricky lines. So knight to h4 going after the bishop, bishop to h7, and now the immediate f4 already. Alireza wants to play f5, close off uh, the light square bishop and kind of make it uh, problematic for black to play e6. So uh, Wojtaszek goes e6 right away and f5. Now Alireza wants to uh, capture on e6 and get a nice semi-open file for his rook. Uh, and here bishop to e7. Uh, here if you capture it, there's just nothing good to come of it. If captures, captures and captures, uh, white's, uh, white's setup is just great. He's going to develop the queen, for example, uh, bishop to e7, e4. And after captures and captures, you can castle, but uh, then let's say c3. Uh, white will get the queen into the game, the bishop then play rook a to f1, have already uh, rooks doubled on the f-file and uh, white will have a great game. So instead after f5 we have bishop to e7 by Wojtaszek and now bishop to h3. Mounting more pressure on that e6 pawn, queen to d7 defending and now queen to d3. Also adding another defender to the f5 pawn. Queen to c6 now, and here comes knight to b5. And here uh, Alireza wants to bring his bishop to f4 and go after that c7 pawn. So here knight to c4 first, kind of uh, saying that maybe uh, you cannot play bishop to f4, but of course uh, Alireza can do it. This is never actually a problem. So bishop to f4, and now of course you cannot go after the pawn, uh, even though it attacks the queen, because just queen to b3. And then the knight has to move, and then you capture on c7. Knight c4, knight captures here. And it's just game over for black. So instead, after bishop f4, we have knight to d6. And now comes queen to e3. Uh, I, would just like to, uh, I would just like to mention that uh, instead of this queen to e3 idea, uh, you could go for some captures on d6. But uh, as you know, usual, if you don't really gain anything, you, you do not play moves like that. So queen to e3, uh, aligning the queen nicely with the king here. And also you have to be very careful here because you can never castle queen side, at least not while the knight is here. Uh, for example, if castles knight a7, check just picks up the queen. So here we have knight to c4, again challenging the queen, queen back to d3, and now bishop to d6. So Wojtaszek offers a trade of bishops, and here we have knight captures on d6. Alireza trades this knight for bishop. Uh, it's very interesting, uh, Alireza had a very uh, interesting move here that I'm going to mention, but it's... Uh, it, it's a move you simply don't even consider. It's something uh, the, the great Misha would maybe consider. Bishop captures on h6, g captures, and now b3, trying to kick away the knight. And now black has to figure out that, okay, my only square is b6. Even though b6 is a terrible square for the knight, uh, he would have to give the knight back with knight to e5. But just to show you, if knight to b6, queen to e3, and uh, white's position is just great, uh, regardless of uh, white being down a pawn, he has a beautiful bishop here. Queen excellently plays the knight, is a monster. Uh, you're ready to open up the F file to bring the other rook into the game. And like we already mentioned, black will struggle to find a good move here because castles is never an option because of this check losing the queen. So it, it was... Um 
Bishop captures on h6 is a very complicated idea, but uh, for, uh, Alireza goes for knight captures on d6. Uh, this comes with check, we have knight captures on d6, and now bishop to e5, just improving the position of that bishop, uh, and now comes knight d to e4. Black also wants to have a nice uh, outpost for the knights. We have queen to a3, now preparing, uh, preventing the kingside castle, and now queen to d7. Here, uh, Wojtaszek wants to play c6, uh, even though here castling queenside is always an option, but it, it, it looks very scary. White can just start pushing those pawns, uh, get, get the rooks behind the pawns, and uh, well, it just doesn't feel all that pleasant. But okay, queen to d7 was played, and now c4. So uh, Alireza wants to open up uh, lines now, as uh, the black king is probably going queenside, but it's still very early to tell. So c6, and now f captures on e6. We have f captures on e6, and c captures on d5. We have knight captures on d5, and now bishop to g2. Uh, so what do you play here? Knight to d2, by rather going after that rook, and if you're not careful, knight to c4 is coming with an attack on the bishop and the queen. So here, uh, rook f to c1. Maybe, maybe a slight improvement is bishop to f3, but this is such a such a uh, crazy engine move that you uh, it it seems weird to even consider this. Now, of course, uh, capturing the rook is out of the question because of bishop to h5. But then after castles queenside, you could maybe then shift the rook to c1. So maybe the bishop is better on f3 than on g2. But uh, you know. Uh, who are we to know such things? So here, knight to d2 and rook f to c1, as planned. We have rook to f8, and now comes knight back to f3. So here, knight captures on f3, and bishop captures on f3. So as you can see, bishop finds its way to f3 uh, either way. And now, uh, not going for a queenside castle, because that would be too dangerous, king to f7, going for a nice artificial castling with king f7, king g8. Uh, and now, finally, e4, uh, grabbing hold of the center and kicking away the knight from d5. We have knight to b4, and now queen to e3. Uh, we have king to g8, the king now is safely tucked in on g8, and now rook to c3. Uh, the rooks can now be doubled up uh, on the c file, and maybe Alireza can make something of this. We have rook 8 to d8, and now comes h4. Uh, we have b6 by black, and now bishop to e2, shifting the bishop over to this diagonal. Uh, we have queen to e7, and now bishop back to g4 now, putting pressure on the e6 pawn. So here, queen to f7, uh, but queen to f7 is not really a problem for white, because black is playing a waiting game here. Here, Wojtaszek is uh, waiting for uh, Alireza to decide what he wants to do. Uh, do, the look, do the rooks belong on the c file, on the f file? Does he want to play d5 at some point? He is just uh, testing him, and here, uh, h5, just grabbing more space. The bishops are excellently placed here, because they cover all of these uh, squares, and you really don't have to worry about that queen rook battery there. So h5, grabbing more space here, not allowing any g6 ideas in the future. We have queen back to e7, again, uh, black just waits to see what uh, white will do. And now rook a to c1. And here Alireza says, um, I might be interested in grabbing this as uh, I'm attacking the e6 pawn. So it could be uh, could could be that something good comes of it, uh, even though it will come with uh, with the price of an exchange. And here, uh, if you go for this knight to a2, which Alireza is allowing with the double attack on the rooks, you would get exactly that. Rook captures on c6, and after you capture on c1, first a nice Swishan bishop captures on e6 with check. King h8, and only now you recapture the knight here, and uh, you get this... Um, well, really weird position where white has this amazing center uh, ready to pick up more points on the queen side and the e4 pawn is off limits. If you capture on e4, then of course queen captures on h6 is coming and that's just it. Bishop to h7 and now rook to c7 and it's game over. The queen moves and you're getting checkmated or you have to give up the queen and then you're getting checkmated. So uh, after rook 8 to c1, uh, Radek said, uh, all right, that seems to be like too much. I'm just going to play queen to e8, uh, defend this pawn one more time. Uh, but now he allows bishop to c7. And now uh, Alireza will grab a pawn, but he will still lose the exchange. So rook d7, we have bishop captures on b6. And now finally knight to a2, going after the rooks here. 
rook captures on c6 and now knight captures on c1. We have rook captures on c1 and now rook to b7, attacking the bishop here and bishop to c5. So everything is nicely defended. You cannot grab the pawn because the rook is hanging. So rook f to f7 and now b3. And everything is now nicely cemented. This bishop is coming to c4 to uh, keep an eye on the b3 pawn. And regardless of black having the two rooks, the bishop pair will be, will be, uh, well, maybe almost fully operational. So let's see what happens. We have rook f to c7 and rook back to e1. Uh, rook to c6 and now bishop to e2. Preparing to shift the bishop over to c4. We have queen to b8 uh, and now comes uh, bishop to b5 first. First pushing back the rook, rook to c8 and now bishop back to c4. And now white's king is a, a little bit loose here so you have to be careful that queen is eyeing the g3 pawn. If black somehow gets one check in then uh, you can uh, you know kiss your winning chances goodbye. So here king to h8 on pinning and now comes rook to f1. So what do you play here? We have bishop to g8, uh, adding more, more defense to the d5 square. And now comes king to g2. So the g3 pawn is nicely defended. Uh, rook to d7 and now rook to f2. Uh, so uh, adding adding more defense to that white king. We have queen to b7, now aligning the queen with the king here. And now rook to e2. Uh, we have queen back to c7 and now bishop to a3. Uh, just preparing to shift the bishop over to this diagonal. Uh, we have queen to b6 now, uh, preventing white from going d5 as the queen the queens would get traded off. So bishop to b2 first, defending the pawn one more time, and now bishop back to h7. And here Alireza played queen to f4, uh, and now uh, you don't have to worry about uh, queen being on e3. So bishop back to g8, keeping an eye on the d5 square. And this is where things could have gone uh, extremely well for Alireza, uh, but they are both very low on time and they still have to make uh, six more, uh, eight more moves until they reach the second time control. So here Alireza played queen to g4. However, I will just mention d5 here is just is just great. It seems like it's impossible because this is defended twice, uh, but uh, for example, captures, captures, and now you don't have to worry about bishop captures because the tactics work in uh, the tactics work in white's favor. For example, bishop captures on d5, rook captures, uh, and now bishop captures on g7. King captures and queen to g4 check picks up the rook. Now, while this is something that Alireza sees probably in the blink of an eye, the problem, uh, I think he didn't go for d5 because after d5, you could go for captures, captures, and then not captures, but rather queen to d6. So you could kind of prevent uh, uh, all, all the exchanges. And even though white is still better here, uh, Alireza cannot allow even uh, a chance for uh, for uh, Wojtaszek to save the game because he needs that win to, uh, you know, uh, catch up to Giri and the others. So here, uh, after bishop to g8, we have queen g4, now putting a lot of pressure on black's king here, and now rook c to d8. Uh, we have bishop to c3, and now comes a move that is really, really tricky, queen to c6. Here, uh, Radek gives up the a5 pawn voluntarily, uh, for some uh, for some counterplay, or maybe it was even a even even a blunder, but I don't think it was. Uh, I think he actually uh, uh, wanted to give it away. So here, bishop captures on a5, and now rook back to b8. Uh, we have queen to f4 now attacking the rook there, and rook d to b7. And now black is ready to give up those rooks for uh, for the bishop and the pawn. Point being that if you play uh, bishop back to c3, then black happily picks up the pawn here, captures, captures, and captures. The bishop is under attack, let's say bishop b2, and now the game continues, but black will very easily collect the, the rest of the pawns. Uh, you've given back the material, uh, but you've taken care of all of the threats on the queen side. So Alireza doesn't allow that. He goes queen to e3, adds more support to the b3 pawn, and now queen back to e8. Attacks the h5 pawn, Alireza defends it with the g4, and now now queen to d7. And here uh, there are some ideas of playing king to h3 uh, uh, for the moment improving the position of your king but Alireza goes for the immediate the, uh, queen to g3. So what do you play here? Here Alireza is giving up the d4 pawn in order to play bishop to c3 with tempo. And uh, Radek, uh, after considering the position for a while, decides to capture it. They are both extremely low on time and this is move 58, so two more moves until time control. Bishop to c3 and now as the queen 
is under attack, queen to d1. And uh, they both need to make one more move to reach time control. And here, Alireza played rook to e, rook to d2. He reached the second time control. And this is, in fact, the strongest move recommended by the engine. Uh, and it was uh, at this point that Alireza left the, the playing table and he went on uh, to see what was happening uh, with the tournament. And uh, I, I think it was at this point that he saw that he no longer has uh, chances of uh, getting into tie breaks because uh, uh, Van Forest uh, has better additional criteria than him. And uh, even if he wins the game, both him and Giri would have better additional criteria and it would definitely be a match between the two of them and Alireza would not even get a chance to compete. So here uh, I can imagine that he was very, very sad when he saw this, but uh, then his problems only started then because, um, I mean, that kind of ruins your entire tournament uh, because we all know Alireza came here to win it and to show everyone that he's the best. Uh, but... Um, after learning uh, learning this, uh, I'm sure he didn't even feel like playing the game anymore. But the problem was that his position is still much better. Uh, but uh, here they, they started interrupting him constantly. And they were walking around the playing hall, uh, making everything uh, uh, ready for the tie breaks between Anish Giri and Jordan Van Forest. And Alireza was, of course, uh, very annoyed by this. He was, uh, you know, uh, telling them to back off, to, uh, you know, be quiet. He's still playing the game. And then they even interrupted the game at some point to tell them that they should move in another room to continue playing the game there. But that's just... Um that's just something you don't do. I mean, I, I know when I was playing in tournaments and I'm a, I'm nowhere near in the playing strength of the, these guys, but it doesn't matter. When you're playing your own game and when you're in the game for five hours, they were playing over six hours, uh, and someone interrupts you, it just completely shatters your, your concentration. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's something that's uh, very interesting because uh, I, I seriously doubted that they would do something like this if it was Magnus still playing, or let alone imagine if they did this uh, to... To Gary Kasparov. I mean, uh, I, th there are videos on YouTube where people just walk uh, to, to look at Kasparov's position and he gives them such a death stare. It, it, I mean, it, it's an instant kill stare. So interrupting Kasparov in a position like this would be, uh, I, I don't think they would, uh, you know, uh, live to tell, to tell the tale. Uh, but Alireza is only 17 and I guess they figured, uh, yeah, it's uh, it, it's okay to pick on this kid. Uh, but I, it was uh, very, very poor, poorly done because it's not only the uh, the final standings of the tournament that matter here, but Alireza is also knocking on the doors of being uh, in the world top 10 in classical. So uh, interrupting him here, that's, that's just something you don't do. Uh, but okay, it happened. What, what can you do? Uh, after Alireza's rook to d2, queen to b1 was played. Radek also reaches time control, and now here uh, you have to find you have to find the move here. Uh, and uh, the the best for white here is now queen to d3, and white has to opt for for an end game. But I think Alireza was already very very annoyed here, and that he simply couldn't concentrate to, to take this game into an end game. For example, captures captures, and now black would have this freeing e5 move going for bishop captures to eliminate the defenders of the b3 pawn. We would see captures captures, and now b4, and white still has the two connected pass pawns here that, that are defended, and uh, it's it, it would be a very very uh, well, tricky position to play, but white is better and Alireza can still push. However, after queen to b1, Alireza played queen to f4 uh, rather quickly, and it seemed like uh, there's no defense. I mean, everything is hanging, this is hanging, uh, the, the bishops are just uh, amazing here. How do you stop this? But there is one move that saves Radek, so feel free to pause the video and uh, try to find this uh, saving move while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on spotting the incredible uh, E5. Also for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, because this is uh, a, such a not an easy move to find, but it does make sense because now uh, there is no queen captures on h6 because the bishop is blocked. So you have to react to this, but also your bishop is under attack on c4. So what do you do here? Problem is, if you go queen captures on e5, you're not really threatening anything. Black will just capture on c4, and after b captures, uh, let's say rook, rook f8, threaten a queen to f1, and you don't have any threats. This is defended by the rook on b7. So here, Alireza said, okay, I'm just going to grab this, and I still have this threat, so what do you do? Uh, but Wojtaszek said, uh, I'm just going to play bishop captures on c4. It's not a problem. You don't have any threats here. If you capture here, I'm just going to play king g8, and now your queen is hanging. You have to move the queen, and now I'm just going to play rook g8, again, with the same threats, and black is just winning here. 
So Alireza, after this, B captures, bishop captures on c4, uh, decided to play b captures on c4, and it was in this position on move 63 that they agreed to a draw, as now there is really nothing more for white to do here. Uh, capturing on h6 is pointless, uh, and it, it just wouldn't really make sense. Uh, I will, however, however, mention what happens if you capture the rook, because that was also one of the options. Still, just rook to f7. Again, black grabs hold of this... Uh, f1 square and not much you can do here if queen to e3 even a bishop captures on b3 you, you can even grab that pawn to completely eliminate white white's counterplay and uh, you would very much enjoy playing this but here alirez just played b captures on c4 and it was in this position that they agreed to a draw uh, because even if the game continues uh you would see something like rook to e8 and you don't really care if queen captures on h6 check king g8 White doesn't have a good continuation here. If queen to g6 preparing h6, just rook to f7. The rook is also under attack, so rook f7. And now h6 here, challenging uh, this this pawn, uh, but it's not a problem. Just queen f1 check, and now it's, it's just a draw. King h2, rook f2 check, captures, captures with check. And now uh, black either continues checking you, or you go up the board. Queen e3 check, king h4. Uh, and then just uh, continue with queen to h1 check or if you go queen to e3 here which is even better to connect with the pawn here now you either push the white king back or if white insists just queen captures on h4 you trade queens and now this is uh, this is drawn bishop f4 let's say king h7 defends the pawn e5 but you will collect all of these pawns and it's not a problem so after uh, b captures on c4 uh the game ended and what what a fight it was uh, but this is uh, just what i wanted to say uh, alireza was better uh, for the entire game and he had a lot of moments where he could have uh, played better but uh, I, I mean it's just unimaginable interrupting uh, i mean he, he's uh, he's uh, almost a top 10 player in the world you, you cannot interrupt him in the final round of a classical tournament that's that's something you don't do i mean that's that's un un unheard of uh, I mean, uh, like I have no no better better example. But imagine if they did this to, to Magnus or Kasparov, it would be. I mean, I don't know. So uh, very poorly handled by the organizers. But uh, I guess I guess they uh, uh, the players signed off on this uh, b before the tournament even started. That if such an uh, such a situation occurs, then they would act this way. But e even if that's the case, I, I don't think it it justifies how how they handled it. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And like I said, uh, I will. Uh, I, I do have some news as um, uh, well. As the channel is uh, nearing uh, the mark of one million subscribers, I decided. Uh, I decided to start a, a second channel where I will be helping uh, any of you whoever wishes to make video content. Uh, of course, uh, regarding chess, uh, you will be able to contact me, and I will be using this other channel to promote other chess channels. So if you are interested in that, I will uh, talk a little bit more about this because there was this. This was a long video i don't want to spend too much talking about it now but basically i will put a link to, to the channel in the description below and also an email uh, where you can contact me and uh, you know ask any questions if you're interested and also uh, maybe send uh, a, 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 at least a little bit some of the video material that you are uh, uh, either currently producing or you are preparing if you are maybe interested in starting a youtube channel so uh, the, the the reason I'm doing this is that, uh, well, I, I, I've already grown uh, too, too big and uh, I would like to use this, you know, power for, for some good. So if I can help uh, you guys start your own channels and also help uh, everyone else who enjoys chess to even find you because you might be creating uh, awesome content and people just can find you uh, in this, uh, well, huge sea of YouTube channels. So uh, th that was kind of my idea here. So feel free to contact me. The email is in the description below and also the link to that channel is in the is in the description below there's still nothing on it so uh, there's no point subscribing to it now because uh, th there's still nothing on it I will inform you guys when uh, when we will start uh, producing content there so you can also check that out and uh, you know uh, d discover other content creators who are who are just maybe starting out but maybe have uh, awesome content maybe it's not going to be chess analysis maybe it's going to be chess lore maybe it's going to be chess history maybe it's going to be uh, uh, I don't know uh, it could be anything fun related uh, you know uh, like literally anything so just wanted to get that out there uh, just to know that, that that's something that's uh, definitely happening 
uh but yeah uh hope you guys enjoyed it uh better luck uh, to, to alireza in the next one but uh, as we've seen from his play in this tournament uh it's i, I think it's uh, fair fair to assume that alireza is definitely the future so i yeah, uh, hope you guys enjoyed it once again uh, i would like to thank mr uh, sb ari eisenbach stefan heber and bradley peterson for a contribution to my channel thank you a lot i really appreciate it as usual you can check two of my previous videos here thank you all for watching and i will see you soon continuing the uh, coverage of the morphe saga checking up on your wonderful suggestions and whatever else happens in the chess world uh, thank you all i will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your day